Make sure you tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Now, before we get into the most entertaining show on the face of the earth, I have to share something with y'all. <laughs> Messi said you're the only person that had to talk over your own commercial. Y'all had to get the likes up. We got to go to Tej one more time? All right, give me a second. Please don't make me go to the Tej again. I leave the office yesterday because I had a deal to do. And <laughs> I leave the office yesterday because I got a deal to do. And, you know, I send off that e-check or whatever. And so I'm out here. I got to go and check on. Uh, another property that I'm trying to close because I was inspired when I seen that Blackstone salary from the guy that wind up making like $1.3 billion. When I seen the guy making $1.3 billion in one year, I said, oh my Jesus, I can't believe it. I felt inspired, right? So then a bunch of stuff happened yesterday. I spilled my Dairy Queen over into my passenger seat. Oh my God, everything is fucked up, right? And then I wind up doing what's something that I usually do, but I haven't done in a very, very, very long time. I haven't done it in a very long time. And so what I did was I spent my afternoon and my evening, my Thursday night. I spent my Thursday night because I don't think anybody was streaming last night or anything like that. It wasn't nothing for me to catch. It wasn't no new news. It wasn't nothing popping, right? And so I spent my Thursday evening riding around in the streets of Metro Detroit, studying, looking, observing, and understanding everything that was happening in the streets. Now, let me tell you what it is that I do. When I was, when I was, I would say probably 15, 16 years ago, Rita and I would go through this, this process where we would drive through certain neighborhoods, right? We would drive through certain neighborhoods and we would use that inspiration in order to drive us and continue to keep us on, on point, especially during the time during the recession, right? So I would, and y'all don't know nothing about this because y'all don't know nothing about being, taking your girls out on certain type of dates. Y'all think that taking a chick on a date is, you know, taking her out to Roof Chris, Ocean Prime, you know, you out here taking her out to a mall and spending a bag on her. Nah, you know what me and Rita used to do? We was broke as fuck. In 2008, 15 years ago, I was working two jobs. I was going to school. But then on a Sunday, in a on a Sunday, what we would do is we would jump in the car, right? I had bought a Cadillac. I bought a Cadillac Cash. I bought a Cadillac STS, right? And it was a red Cadillac. And um, I drove, when I started really, really getting money and getting back on my feet, I never bought a new car. I stayed rolling in the Cadillac until it got to like 300 and something thousand miles. And eventually the engine gave out and the, the side door wasn't working, anything like that. Right. And so um, the 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 driver's side door on the car, let me tell you how broke I was, but how dedicated to the movement I was. Um, the driver's side door on the Cadillac. STS did not open. For some reason, I couldn't get the door open anymore. So me and Rita, we would jump in the car, right? I had a baby, so my daughter was a newborn baby. Leslie was a brand new baby, right? She was born in 2008. We would put the, uh, the, the, the seat, the baby seat in the back car, and then we would get in on the passenger side, because I had went to the auction. I w Listen, I gave all of my cars up. I went to the auction. I paid cash for the car, and I said, I'm going to ride the fuck out of this car, and we're going to run this check up, right? And so in order to keep us inspired, we would go on dates. Now, we had started to get a little bit of money, but we didn't want to fall back into the same trap that we had in order to, you know, not leverage what it was that we was making in order to start investing. But we were saving every single dime that we have to, so that we can throw it into our investments, right? And so we would get into the car. I would jump into the passenger seat, and then Rita would get in behind me, and we would go on a date. Now, our date... Our date night or our date afternoon on Sundays would be to ride through different neighborhoods and observe all of the different beautiful houses and everything that, that we wanted to dream of having and the things that we wanted to do. We would go on a free date. Nah, I had, that, uh, I had a Cadillac STS and it had that North Star engine in it and we drove that bitch to like 300,000 miles. 
And we would go on a free date. And what we would do is we would drive around all of the most prestigious neighborhoods and we would just dream. And I would say, yeah, we gonna be able to build over there and we could have all of the real estate over there and whatever, so on and so forth. And that's how we would spend some of our Sunday afternoons just genuinely talking about what our goals were and how it was that we were going to get rich and be able to buy any fucking thing that we wanted to buy, period. Yeah, y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all over here leading with y'all money. Rita tell you, she in the chat right now. Y'all over there leading with y'all money, thinking that that's the thing that's going to help you find the one that's for you. No, you got to be with the one that's down with you when you ain't got shit. That's how I used to take my chicks out. Yo, this is what we about to do. We will make some sandwiches. Go and get us a fucking blanket. Drive through. Listen, this is what we used to do. See, y'all don't know nothing about game. Y'all over here listening to these game coaches. They can't teach you shit. We would go pack up lunch, make some sandwiches. They would be great. Lettuce, tomatoes. We would, like, get the turkey bacon and all of that shit. And we would pack up the food, right? And so then we would go and we would drive through the neighborhoods and look at all of the beautiful houses. And then we would go to the park. This was on a Sunday. We would go to the park. We would take a blanket, lay it out, get our favorite books, and then we would talk about what our dreams are and what it is that we've seen, and we would eat the lunch that we packed. And it wouldn't cost us anything but gas money. It would not cost us anything with gas money. That's what we used to do on our dates. It didn't cost us anything. So we would just talk about it. We would talk about what our goals was, was our, what our dreams was, and we would just we would vibe out. And, our, and Leslie, she didn't know no better. She didn't know we was broke. Leslie ain't never seen a, a, a dark day in her life. But yesterday, I'm driving around, and um, I went back to the thing that put me in that space that gave me that drive to be successful in the first place, right? And I fucking come across... Because I'm thinking to myself, I can afford that, I can afford that, I can buy any fucking thing over here. So I get to a space where it says construction dead end, right? Construction dead end. And I'm like, yo, I see something over there. There's some lights over there. So I drive over there. Now keep in mind, this picture does not do it justice because there's about eight fucking chimneys. This place looked like a, like a Walmart and it just extends and it just goes back and back and back. And so I'm like, is that a is that a retail store? I've never seen anything like this in my life. I had to take a picture of it. I said, I gotta talk about this on the Millionaire Morning Show tomorrow. I said, is that a retail store? So I drive, I go around, and then I see the the sign where it says that, you know, such and such home builders and you know, they had the home builder sign on it. I said, no. I said, this neighborhood is, this area is not even zoned for commercial property. That is a, a home. And so I started looking and I seen what was to be the garages and all of that stuff. And it just went back. I mean, it went back and back and back. It looked like a fucking designer Walmart. It had like eight chimneys in that bitch. And I was like. Humans don't build things like this to live in. Im impossible. Impossible. Impossible for humans to build things like this to live in. And so, I, you know, I drive around it and I get out the car and I look at it and I take a picture and I'm just like, I'm, I'm just trying to compartmentalize it, right? I'm, I'm really trying to understand what the fuck is going on here, right? And so I'm driving home. And I just cut the music off and I was just silent because my brain started to work. I started getting angry. I literally started getting bothered and I started getting angry at myself because I was thinking to myself like, how impossible? Like who, who can see, Hoppo, who is these niggas that's got all of these money built in this fucking place that I can't afford and I've never seen a home that big in my entire life? 
And it just started bothering me and it bothered my soul because I was thinking to myself, they got the same 24 hours as I have. Why can they build this and I don't have access to something like this? How is how is how am I able to exist in a world where somebody else can do something legally and I'm not able to have access to it? And I just got silent. And then my brain, you know, after I got over my anger, my brain started to work and I started to put stuff together. And I was thinking to myself, it's go time. That was the inspiration that I needed in order to continue to push myself. This is the message that I'm giving to y'all. And then we're going to deep dive into the show. Some of you are a big fish in a very, 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 very small pond. It looked like a hotel, Demetrius. A lot of us are big fish in very small ponds. Meaning, it's not the city that you in. It's not the location that you have. It's the people that you surround yourself by. And if you are not dreaming, if you are not going out and seeing what it is that other people is doing so that you can get the inspiration, if the way in which you measure yourself is based off of your current circumstances, right? And I got a video that I want to show y'all that illustrates something, and I like the guy that talks about the video, and we're going to get into it towards the end of the show. But if you think that you're doing okay, and that's why it's so difficult for me to compartmentalize when people say, okay, well, it's okay to make 50, it's okay to make 60. I get it. I'm not ragging on anybody that's doing it legally. All I'm saying is, why can't I have that? Why is that such a dream and it's not a reality? How come we not starting to put together the pieces? Because then I start to figure out like, hey, listen, maybe I'm looking at things wrong. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not as successful as I should be because I'm not putting the pieces together. Maybe I'm not tapping into my mentors. Maybe I'm not leveraging the information that I have. Some of y'all joined the Patreon because you was, was inspired by something that I said, but you ain't watch Nan video. You ain't watch Nan video. Some of y'all got access to people in your life that can give you game and you ain't never tapped into them. Some of y'all have networking opportunities and the only thing that you ever wanted was some sounds in your car and some rims on the tires. Some of y'all have access to some of the greatest people. Y'all have access to the Discord. You got access to the Patreon. You see me. You kick it with me. I come to your city. You automatically somehow, some way get sick. You didn't show up and so your spot was taken, right? It's, it's, it's opportunities that's everywhere for us but we're not starting to source through how it is that we can grasp that and, and, and some of us here's the other caveat to it some of us get a little bit of success we get a little bit of money we become millionaires you start making a hundred thousand two hundred thousand three hundred thousand four hundred thousand five hundred thousand dollars you made a half a million dollars in one year and you think you made it some of us become one two three millionaires you might even meet, meet DECA millionaire status, 10 or more, and you think you made it, and you, then, then that's when you start to die. That's when you start to die, because the minute that you get complacent is the, is the minute that death starts setting in. That's when you start to die. You start doing this, and you start doing this. You start executing on your descent into mediocrity. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. And, and when I reached my home, my home, right, because I drove by some of the properties and I'm building on and stuff like that. And when I reached my crib, something snapped into my mind. And it was a conversation that I had with Kevin Samuels. And he said, Anton, and every time we would get on the phone, we would talk, we would have our conversations, we would talk about the things that we inspired by, we would talk about our strategies and going forward. And when we get off the phone, he would say, nah, and I would start laughing. And he said, I know you're not going to let a 53-year-old man outwork you. I know you're not going to let a 53-year-old man outwork you, Anton. 